shh, don't tell anybody, but these things right here, they're the biggest seller for me. I picked up two of these from Facebook Marketplace and I saved the best one to flip for you all on YouTube. Come along. Hey guys, it's Kara with Lemons to Lemonade Furniture and my channel is all about teaching you how to get out of debt using a little side hustle. That's exactly what my family did and we paid up massive amounts of debt just from flipping furniture. Join me in the garage and I'll show you how we did it. I picked up this entryway table on Facebook Marketplace. The person selling it was moving and she ended up giving me two entryway tables for the price of one, so I paid $50 total for both. I'll tell you all what I sold this for at the end, so just keep watching. This entryway table is not solid wood. It is mainly veneer and particle board. The drawers on the insides do have some solid wood construction to them. It's from a big box store, but it looks like it's really high end and it's a very solid piece of furniture. It'll be great for a flip. I'm gonna make this much more trendy. So the hardware on this one, it's gotta go. I'm gonna save these for another project. One of the easiest ways you can update a piece of furniture is just by switching out the hardware. I'm going to keep these guys for another piece, but I'm going to give this some new hardware that's going to elevate this piece of furniture and make it a lot more modern. Now that I've gotten the knobs removed, I'll give everything a good clean with some simple green and some warm water. When I'm cleaning a piece, it's a really great time to assess any of the damage that there might be and any little fixes that I'll need to go back and take care of before I can apply any paint. Since I'll be replacing the old handles, I'll need to fill in these hardware holes. I put a piece of painter's tape in the back of the drawer and then I'll use some wood fill to make sure that these hardware holes are completely filled. I'll give the wood filler a little time to dry and in the meantime I'll begin scuff sanding the entire piece using a 180 grit sanding pad on my surf prep sander. Scuff sanding your piece is really important especially when it's shiny like this one. Just make sure that your paint will adhere nicely and give it something to grip onto. decided to use milk paint on this project. I really like the finish that it offers and it just looks so matte and this it's going to put it in the direction that I am thinking in my head that I want to go in with this entryway table. Full disclosure, I'm about to have a massive fail on this project, but I left it in the video just so you can see this is real life and sometimes it happens. Milk paint is not exactly going to be my friend this time around. However, I still love the finish of it. I just messed up one crucial part. But if you're wanting to use milk paint, you mix equal parts water and milk paint, use a jar, put a marble in there, give it a good shake, and 10 minutes later, it's ready to paint. My milk paint is ready to go. It sat for 10 minutes and it is ready. I've got a Jolie paintbrush that I'm going to use with this and it'll add lots of beautiful texture. Now that I'm about to show you guys one of my biggest painting mishaps, you're going to have to tell me about yours in the comments below. I can't wait to hear. Thank you. 
so I let my milk paint dry overnight. I came out this morning into the garage to see what was going on and I have got just chippiness galore. Um, I didn't use the bonding agent on the milk paint. You can definitely do that. If you use the bonding agent, you won't have the chippiness. I wanted a little bit of chip, but not this much chip. So I'm going back to the drawing board. I'm gonna have to start over. This is not the look I was hoping for on this. That's all right, these things happen sometimes. So I'm gonna try to my best to strip all this off. I think I have an easy way to do that. And we're going back to square one. Oh, you guys, an entire day wasted sanding back the previous milk paint finish. Luckily, it came off pretty easily with my orbital sander and a 200 grit sanding pad. Since it wasn't sealed, the paint flaked right off. Well, the mistake with my milk paint cost me a whole extra day in the garage because I had to scrape it off peel it back and then sand it down, clean it off again and wait for it to dry before I can keep moving forward. Now that I've removed the milk paint and I've sanded down to some of the original surface on this, I've got to prime it just to make sure I don't have any bleed through. So I'm going to be using some Eclipse Stain Blocking Primer by Lily Moon just to make sure I don't have any tannins that end up coming through my paint. Before I put my primer on, I wiped down all of my sanding dust one more time just to get this thing nice and clean and ready again. I used Lily Moon's Eclipse Stain Blocking Primer in my Gravity Fed HVLP spray gun and off we go. I wasn't sure what color I was going to use on this just yet, so I applied two good coats of the stain blocking primer just to be sure that none of the tannins bled through. Now that my primer's dry, I used a 400 grit sand pad just to take down any lumps and bumps that the primer left behind before we start to paint. Let's try painting again, shall we? This time I'm going to stick with the green. I'm going to use Lily Moon's paint in the color foliage. It's just a nice neutral green that should go with most decors. I'll get this loaded into my gravity fed HVLP spray gun and off we go again. My spray setup consists of a 20 gallon compressor and my HVLP sprayer that cost me about $15 from Harbor Freight. You don't need this compressor setup in order to spray paint. I have included some of my favorite electric paint sprayers listed in the video description, so don't be intimidated by what I'm using here. There are plenty of other alternatives. You can see what great coverage I have just from that first coat, but of course we need to do a second coat just for good measure. I let this guy dry overnight in the garage after two coats of paint and it looks perfect, thank goodness. So now it's time to poly.
For poly protection, I'm using Lily Moon Stellar Shield in a satin finish. This is a water-based formula and it goes really well through my Gravity Fed HVLP spray gun. I'll do two coats on this for good coverage. I'm going to elevate this guy just another notch by adding some brushed bronze hardware. I use the hardware template to guide me where to find the pilot holes. I cannot be trusted to do this any other way. I found the hardware on Amazon and it definitely gives this entryway table a more sleek look. Big thank you to Chrissy who ordered my sanding blocks off my Amazon wish list for me. I love to use these to clean up the insides of the drawers and to help get off any paint overspray. These are about a 600 grit so they're nice and soft and they won't scratch the wood. Just really helps remove the mistakes. And here's one quick look at our before, before we get to our after. I love the updated simplicity and getting rid of all that reddish orangey toned wood definitely helped. Entryway tables are huge sellers for me and they don't end up lasting very long once I list them. I bought this guy for 25 bucks and ended up selling him for 200. This would have been a quick flip without my paint mess up, but things happen. Otherwise, I'd be really happy with that profit. It's a great turnaround time and an easy sell. Thanks guys for tuning in. Hope to see you next time on Lemons to Lemonade Furniture.